morning, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here with you all today in Bingham after 18 months of no community gatherings. My name, for those of you who don't know, is Jennifer Kenderson, and my primary role at Taft is the academic dean. By now, some of you have been on campus for a month. You made it through almost three weeks of classes, have taken assessments, are connecting with friends, new and old, hopefully, and, and hopefully Taft is beginning to feel like a home away from home. We need to have conversations about the academic honor code. We need different, more open, and more honest conversations. They need to be informed and real and continual. Listing what's not allowed is not enough, and the evidence tells us this approach is not effective. We need ongoing, open, and informed conversations between teachers and students, and students and students. The idea of honest scholarship is really confusing because great scholarship's always about using and building on or qualifying or rejecting the ideas of others. Drawing a neat line between plagiarism and scholarship is really, really hard. Access to the work of others is so much easier now. We need you to recognize the tools and access, speak to ways they do and do not enhance deep learning, and create an open dialogue. What does being a scholar in the digital age mean to you? You all are here to learn, explore, challenge, write, think critically, collaborate, have fun, smile, paint, sing, run, and laugh, and play. But first and foremost, you're Taft students. Scholarship appears in varied forms and happens in varied locations. Ideas have value and need to be attributed to the proper source, whether that be through proper citations, a note at the end of your homework in an informal setting, or mentioning to your teacher that you had help with an assignment. I offer this metaphor and anecdote that I offered the faculty earlier. A few years ago, when Mr. Kenderson and I were in Boston for a month recovering from surgery, we had to go to Brigham and Women's Hospital two to three times a week from Waltham, Massachusetts. We used the Maps or Waze app on our phones every time. I don't think we ever went the same way twice. We wanted to avoid traffic and get there as fast as possible. Did we learn exactly how to get from Waltham to the Brigham? No. Were places familiar? Sure. However, if we really wanted to learn how to get there, we would have to study the route and drive without the use of the apps, or do some practice runs with someone who knew the route and then be tested without any help. Driving with ways telling you when and where to turn means you're less likely to have learned, internalized, and kept the knowledge of the way there. Ways helps, to be sure, but the learning only takes us so far. We need to try to drive there without ways so the learning will stick. Is ways bad? No, indeed it's super helpful, and there are times and places for the use of those apps, such as translators, math equation solvers, etc. But in order to test whether or not you know the material, we need to remove those apps. I also remember a story from just a few years ago when I was pregnant with our second child. All right, it was more than a few years ago as we just dropped him off at college last month. I told my class that I was pregnant sometime during the first week of school and that after spring vacation, they would have a different teacher. I'm not sure I ever mentioned that again. And come February, the students in the class were chuckling about something. I asked what was so funny, and a girl piped up, Johnny didn't know you were pregnant. It made me realize how much you all take in in these first weeks and months of school, and that saying something once does not mean that you have internalized it. So please, ask questions about academic honesty early and often with your teachers, your friends, your advisor, your class dean. Keep the lines of communication open as we develop relationships <clears throat> Hopefully, you will be able to reach out when you need help or need an extension, and you won't resort to taking shortcuts that have lasting repercussions by violating the honor code. How terrific would it be if an academic honor code violation was avoided because you asked questions and got clarification about an assignment? Last year, we had 12 honor code violations that resulted in suspensions. Many co other conversations took place in my office that didn't lead to an honor court. Our academic honesty statement, which can be found in the student handbook, reads, all Taft students are scholars. 
They seek knowledge, understanding, and mastery in an academic setting. They find joy in collaborating with others, exploring new ideas, and becoming lifelong learners. From a place of honesty and integrity, Taft scholars inquire, interrogate, discover, and synthesize viewpoints in individual and collaborative settings while acknowledging the intrinsic value of ideas by honoring others' intellectual contributions. There's also a set of norms that students must be honest with respect to all academic matters. Students must generate and submit work that is exclusively their own unless collaboration is permitted and appropriately acknowledged. When collaborating with others, students must abide by the teacher prescribed guidelines. You must appropriately cite works or individuals such as other students, faculty, tutors, et cetera, that you consulted. You must sit for assessments, including exams, without assistance from others or unapproved devices. And you must not copy or cheat from other students' work. In addition, we have a pledge that, you, that we ask you to sign at the end of each graded assignment. I'm sure all of you have already written that this year. It reads, I pledge my honor that I have neither given nor received aid on this assignment. And often, it's abbreviated to, quote, I pledge my honor, and then signed. When a student violates one of the above points, we treat this situation extremely seriously. My final point is regarding cell phones. Cell phones are a distraction. However, they are an essential part of our culture now, and they aren't going away. But how can we manage our use of them better? Cell phones and technology in general were at the core of most of the honor code violations last year. Ms. Leal turned me on to an NPR podcast that va validates our policy of asking you to, quote, park your cell phone in the classroom. According to NPR, a new study finds that a person's attention is depleted just by having a smartphone in sight. This got Adrian Ward from the University of Texas and the other researcher, Martin Boss, thinking. If their brains were occupied at least a little by feeling the phones were calling out to them, what effect might this have on their mental abilities? So along with co-authors Kristen Duke and Eilat Neasy, they conducted a series of experiments. They had volunteers come in to take cognitive tests, but there was a catch. Some volunteers were told to leave their smartphones in another room. Some were told to leave the phones in a bag or a pocket, and others were told to leave their phones on the desk next to them as they took the test. Now, all of the phones were on silent. But big differences emerged between volunteers as they took the test, especially when it came to understanding and solving novel problems. What they found is that people did better on those tasks the farther their phones were from them. So those who had their phones in another room did significantly better than those who had their phones on the desk right in front of them. And then those who had their phones in their pockets or their bags were sort of in the middle between those two groups. They are saying that devices have a small but persistent effect. So please, remember these facts. Put your phone on silent and away from you when you're working. This week, you will be asked to read and electronically sign an academic honesty statement in your English class, acknowledging that you understand Taft's expectations around scholarship. This form will live on your PowerSchool page as a reminder to you the pledge that you have made to be a student here. So ask questions, challenge each other, know that we understand how difficult it is to be a scholar in the digital age, and we're here to support and encourage you in this endeavor. Thanks.